to elevate. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Two Brothers channel. I'm one brother. And I'm the second brother. Welcome, everybody. Hey, hey. <laughs> Back to wow, you. wow, wow, wow. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is another special episode because... Dun, da, da, da. Yeah, back. We yeah. got her back. Yay. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's great to be oh. back. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And after um, popular demand, after popular demand, <laughs> popular demand. Okay, Rike, I want us to start with money and value. Okay. Now, um, I, growing up, I, I worked, you know, like you heard from the story that I told earlier on, that I taught you guys the late gratification, and I just don't throw money at you. Yeah. I will pay for your school trips, we'll pay for the things that are important, but you knew that, you know, if it's going to be anything frivolous, you know, you just don't, you, like you said, you are not just comfortable to ask. But, what would you say to someone that says that uh, that is that is too strict or too boring or maybe that's not a good idea? What would you say as someone that went through that process? To somebody who says anything like that, I completely disagree with you because not having money has taught me so many things. I've gained so many skills and like now I know the actual value of things, you know, like just being given money isn't anything. Anybody can give people money, you know, especially your parents to their kids. Like it's, it's nothing. I even had a friend in fact, and this was the biggest lesson that I learned. I had a friend and all her life, you know, I knew that she could call her dad. Five minutes later, he's put a grand in her account. That's how, you know, easy it was for her to get money. So I, being her best friend and being in such close proximity to her, when we went to uni and we turned 18, she asked her dad for money. Her dad said, you're now a big girl. You're in university. You're 18 now. Go get a job and get your own money. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, she was crushed. Because in uni, it's a hard time. And being a student, we have no money. But actually seeing her go through that, from being able to get money as easy as, you know, clicking her fingers to actually being just cut cold turkey, nothing from her dad. It was very, very shocking to me. And she would always tell me that, oh, you're so lucky you've got a dad like yours. And I was thinking, I know, <laughs> because my dad didn't spoil me the way that she did. She, she grew up in a way where everything was done for her, whereas I had to actually learn the responsibility, do things for myself, which allowed me to gain a lot of skills in being independent, you know? And I, I believe that every young person needs that in their life. You don't need to be dependent on your parents at all. Okay, your parents can provide you with things, but on their own accord, you should want to have, actually have things for yourself and be independent. Hmm. Wow. See, and I could, I, I'm really careful name is Aderi Yike, which means the crown has found something to cherish. Hmm. But, I did not spoil her. <laughs> I did not spoil her. That name, now she can, that name, she's living to that name now because she can't be spoiled mm. and not be spoiled. What do you think, Mr. Clay? Well, you know, it's, it's amazing what she, that story she just said there because most parents, you know, uh, always, I always think that the best time to be a child in the UK, it was the best time to be alive in the UK is when you're a child. Because everything is given to you. You know, you just ask and it's given to you. If your parents can't give it to you, your, the government will provide it for you. You know, and then you lose sense of, you know, the, where, where does that transition happen? Where do you go mm. from? Everything has been handed to you and you being able to get what you need in your life. And that gap is just like, and it's like between day and night. It's like, like Ricky just said there. One minute you're 17, <laughs> everything is great. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're, you're, you're the queen amongst your friends, you know, mm -hmm. you're paying for everybody, you know. Yeah, that's how it was. 
that's how it was she was paying for everything and like I even felt a way for her to do that for me like I obviously I didn't ask my parents for money so even though she was my friend it felt very weird to having somebody pay everything for you just because they have it you know <laughs> and and then it comes to that day where they're telling you now you're not an adult we need to you need to be paying me for all that money I've been giving you over the years Mm-hmm. What is that? Well, I did, I missed the memo. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> now, but what was weird for me, Rike, is you obviously came home and told me that story. But what was weird was she now saying she wished that her dad was like me. Where did that come from? Um, I think after her, you know, obviously texting her dad. I I think it was in the same day. Or it must have been just out of the blue when you called me and we were living together at the time. So for me, I hate putting a phone to my ear. I, I put it on loudspeaker. Unless there's something, you know, very secretive that I need to be told. But obviously I had my dad on loudspeaker and all my friends, they knew my family. They knew my mother, they knew my father and they knew my brothers. My dad would even have little talks with us before we'd go out, you know, um, to a party or something like guys on timekeeping or money, etc. And like, we were probably having a conversation. I'm not too sure what it was about, but she was obviously listening and you were like very, um, very like, you know, accommodative and very, just just how you are, you know, just amazing. <laughs> and she was just, she was just like, yeah, I wish I had a dad like yours. Like, you're so lucky. Okay, um, I, th- I think I get it now. So what it was, was that she saw how we interact, we interacted. Uh, and she yeah. saw that you were, you were able to. Because one of the things is this, um, and that's, that's the same I, I offer all my children. You know, um, Rika is 21 now. So she's an adult. She's a full-fledged adult, you know? So mm-hmm. why would I talk to her any other way? You know, I would talk to Rike like I would talk to any, I would talk to Rike like I would talk to Obama. I would talk to, because she has earned. Do you know what I'm saying? She has earned, she has proven herself to be responsible. She has proven us, herself to be, um, to be reasonable. She's proven herself to want to do the work. To, she's proven herself to deliver. Why would I treat her anywhere than someone that is like that? So I talk to my daughter, surprise, surprise, we respect that she has earned, you know, and, you know, that surprises a lot of people. And Mr. Claire, what do you think? Well, it's like you say, it's, it's something that is not given, it's earned. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, Rike, from the interactions I've had with her, she's always one that, because you just get the sense of, okay, Whatever it is, I'm willing to pay the price. You know, I'm not looking for shortcuts. Mm-hmm. You know, because she's, I mean, she's, she's seeing you change careers, you know, grow, develop, the family dynamics changing, you know, and seeing how you, you've, you use the information that you were getting and infusing it into your family, you know? And so she's experienced that. So, um, like, it, it, you know, this life sometimes it, things don't work because people don't deserve it. You know? Because you can't cheat the process. That's it. That's it. You know, it is, it, if, you, if you get it too early, you lose it. And then you have to go and learn again to build yourself up to be able to handle it. It's like, it's like driving for the first time without taking a lesson. You know? You probably crashed that car. Mm-hmm. You know, and most people just want to drive. They don't want to learn to drive. They just want to drive. You know, especially when you're growing up, when you, when you see the cars on the road and your dad has got a nice, shiny, brand new, top of the range. <laughs> you know, and you just want to get in there and drive it, especially show up <laughs> amongst your friends. And that's, a, that's just a disaster. You know, you know, if you don't, you probably, if you don't kill somebody, you know, you probably kill yourself. So, but the, the fact, the fact of the, the fact is, so it's, it's not just of the joy of the driving. It's about, okay, let me learn to drive. Let me pay the price. Let me learn to be responsible. Let me not take a life or kill myself in the process of trying to joyride, 
you know, and actually learning to drive, then you then say, okay, oh, so, so these are the things I need to know. Oh, that's, oh, that's what that's useful. You know, because sometimes you start, you, you know, you might be in a situation where you're using a particular tool or you're in a particular situation where you don't even know why things are the way they are. Mm. But you're going through the training teaches you this is what this is for. This is the clutch. That's what it's for. This is the pedal. This is the brakes. This is the mirrors. You know, this is the, this is the signal. You know, so you know where, what things are being used for. So when you need it, you can apply it, you know, and then you can then get to the destination you want to get to without losing your life and losing everything. All right. Yeah. Now, and that is the process we're bringing to you guys watching us right now, be you in the UK, US, Gambia, Nigeria, Africa, anywhere you are. This process works. And like Mr. Kner is saying, if you do not shortcut the process, it's going to work for you too. I've proven it's worked in my life. It's worked in Mr. Kner's life. Yes. It's worked in my daughter's life. It's working in my son's life. My yes. son was the youngest mayor of our yes. borough some years ago, you know? That's right. That's and right. so these principles, they do work. Now, the important thing is going forward, you know, it's very important that you see, it's not like, oh, Mr. Phil is the biggest. As it is right now, I'm not even ashamed to say, let's look at success now. I define success. The way I define success might be different from the way everyone else defines this. Define <laughs> <Define success. laughs> define success. Okay. I define success is how much of your life you are living on your own terms. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't define success with money, and we can do it. We'll do another video on that. Because right now, um, there's someone called Bill Gates in the world, oh. and there's someone called Sadhguru. We're gonna do a video on that right now. Some people like Bill Gates are so poor, all they have is money. Yep. Let me repeat. People like Bill Gates are so poor, all they have is money. Hmm. Someone like Sadhguru, he is so wealthy and he doesn't have the fraction of the money. You understand what I'm saying? Hmm. But the wealth just oozes. Hmm. Look, this Sadhguru guy has over a million people volunteer for him. Hmm. Let's look at this. Over a million people volunteering, saying, we'll give you our time, hmm. our effort, our... Um, resources. Resources, our gifting to you for free. Let me ask you one question. Who's going to give Bill Gates their time for free? <laughs> <laughs> and we say, yes, Mr. Bill Gates, we want to work for you, but we are going to pay us. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Meanwhile, millions of people are volunteering every day to come and give their life, resource, ingenuity, creativity to Sadhguru for free. Who is richer, Mr. Clay? It's a, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. And that is the part, that is where you say, you know, when you say that thing that, you know, Bugaz is so poor, all he has is money. You know, money is not a measure of success. You know, money money is not the only the only people that worry about money is the people that don't have any. But when you get to a certain place where you're making, it's not even a big threshold. Believe it or not, because it's happened to me personally in my life. When I cross over a certain threshold financially. Then I was like, what was I thinking about money for so, for so long, for so many years for? Yeah. It was consumed, everything. Decisions I made, my wow. happiness level, you know, it's like, you know, there was too much, too much month at the end of the money. 
You know, you know, you've been there where you 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 run out of money and you still yeah. got days. <laughs> you know, but wait, wait. After a while, you just think like money that's been the driving force should not be your driving force. But like you said, Mister Clare, until people get there and they experience it, they're kind of like blinkered. Now, one of the things I can say on this is that I'm proud to say that the, this process that we're talking about, that works. You are in a position now where you actually earn more money than, than me. Yep. You've earned more money. You've, yep. been, you've gone, I started you on the process, but you've gone. So it's not like, oh, Mr. Phil is the biggest guy. He's the biggest guy because he's the one. No, 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 no. One of the ways that I know that this process works is that I even bring people on board that actually exceed me. Yeah, Mr. Claire ex has exceeded me. Even there, there I say, Rike is earning very well right now. <laughs> and to be honest, even on that level, even I can tell you that Rike is even earning more than me. Wow, wow, wow. However, wow. this is where most people miss it. It's never the amount. It's never the amount. Because there's something I was going to sh um, share here. It's like, Again, it's about now going into our own enterprise. Mm. So you've gotten the job. You've like Mr. Claire is such a high earner now that money is not an object, but he needs to go from that into his own, own enterprise. enterprise. That's right. That's okay. Right. Now, when he now goes into this enterprise, I've started a program called Give Genius, and in this program. It's not even it's designed again the same way that it's not that Mr. Phil is the biggest again. No. In the program that I've designed, in the program that I have um, um, created, I have people even bigger than me in the program because it is designed. Look, the the, the gauge of your program is not that you're the biggest or the best. Mm. The gauge of your program is can someone come and be bigger? Yeah. That definitely because what you what you have to realize is this. Mr. Mr. Phil's dream and your dream are not the same. All Mr. Phil's created with Give Genius is a vehicle to take you from where you are today to where you want to be in the future. So if your if Mr. Phil's dream is to live in the UK, you know, you don't have to live in the UK. You know, you could create your own paradise somewhere else. Absolutely. So it's all about achieving your dreams, achieving your goals, your goals. That's what this is all about. It's for you. Back to you, Mr. Phil. Well, let's let's recap, please. So, <laughs> you know, Give Genius for me is such an amazing opportunity. It's crazy having something like that in this day and age where you can actually, where a tool has been created for you to become your own CEO, words of um, Uncle Leia. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, honestly. Uh, I believe that Give Genius allows us and gives us the opportunity to gain skills in terms of interpersonal skills, money management and all sorts that will allow your life to just blossom in ways that you wouldn't even imagine. Honestly, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so this process that we're talking about, we're not just talking about pie in the sky. Mm. We started by saying and showing how it's impacted my life, how it's impacted Mr. Clare's life, how it's even going to the next generation now. Yeah. You get know what I'm saying? And we're now saying that everybody has a path, a real path to go into their own enterprise. And Rika just said there, the tools that she's, if you listen to carefully to what Rika just said there, she was outlining the tools that you can engage in mm. while you're building your own enterprise. So the steps are all there. So when we're talking about value, we're talking about money. We're talking about the skills. We're talking about graduating from your university to your job, from your job into your enterprise. These are real processes that work. Mr. Clay. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, and the amazing thing is you need to get excited about your future. Mm. Because this, this it shows this, this time we're in, 
no other generation has, has lived through this time. Woo! So, you know, don't, don't be the, the, you know, phased out or the illusioned or, you know, picked out by this COVID-19 or whatever. You, and you, it seems kind of depressing. No, no, no. You should get really, really excited. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people are now working from home mm. due to this situation? You mm. know, and the fact that I remember when I was in school many over 20 years ago, when I was in school many, many years ago now, I'm not as young as I look, you know, working from home used to be a dream. People used to say, oh, I wish I could work from home. Now, by law, you have to work from home. <laughs> I mean, that's a totally different life to what, we, what it was. So just imagine now, uh, like Mr. Pugh also said, this is the, now the age of the entrepreneur. This is the age where businesses, you will spring up businesses that will achieve your dreams and goals. You don't have to be in one location for you to make your money. You can be anywhere in the world and your income is, it just keeps growing. And it keeps growing. And you know the most exciting thing about having your own, being your own CEO, like, like Rike said, having your own business? Nobody can retire you. Woo! That is right there. That is the power right there, Mr. Claire. Nobody can sack you. Nobody can retire you. So and oh. you're doing what you love. <laughs> so it's a win-win. <laughs> what do you guys? <laughs> Rike, please. Yeah, so <laughs> I found that being in a job, number one, has so many issues. You know, first of all, you have to wake up at ridiculous times, sometimes where you don't even want to go in. You know, the people that you deal with, they can be completely and utterly irritating. Um, and sometimes the environment just isn't suited for your type of person, you know. Somebody like me, I'm, I'm very... Well, I don't want to say I'm big, <laughs> but like I'm very open-minded, I'm very adventurous, you know, but I've learned that being in a job has only allowed me and allowed me to gain only a certain amount of skills, whereas building my organization in Gift Genius, I'm learning different things which I never thought I could even, you know, venture into. For example, um, my dad and Uncle Leia gave me a task of saying hi to people. In my job, that's like the number one thing that I have to do. I'm, I'm very good with conversation. You know, I'm very confident. I can speak to anybody. But intentionally having to go out of my way to say hi to somebody was very, very interesting for me. And it kind of, you know, took me back a bit. But doing something like that, stepping out of my comfort zone and venturing into a world which is, which is the unknown was very, very satisfying for me. So I believe that growing your organization and venturing into your own enterprise is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Don't get me wrong. Some people may want to be in a job for the rest of their life. They may feel comfortable, you know, it might be good for them. But if you're somebody like me, <laughs> that is the best way to go. Back to you. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Look, we're going to have to do a part three, guys. <laughs> yes. Because I want, in part three, I want us to look at the fact that there's a process that I used to get a job. Mr. Claire used to get a job. And Rick Etu used to get a job. And don't forget, the, this job we're talking about, we know we're going to graduate out of that into our enterprise. Okay. So again, yeah. we're, 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 looking, we're already developing processes that we're going to be teaching people of how we did it to graduate out of our job. And like Mr. Claire said, your dream future is possible now than ever because the world is changing. Technology is changing a lot of things. I dare say this time next year, and maybe somewhere in Africa, and maybe somewhere in the Midlands somewhere, you know, doing the same things and earning even better without a job. Mm, powerful, powerful. Without because, a job. Because Please. if you were born today, the world that you'll be born into, just imagine so many things that you're seeing around you. You will not see your parents working for, for you know, your parents will be working from home. <laughs> you know, you'll be seeing your learning from home, even school. You, you weren't allowed to go back to school. You were learning from home. You know, 
you will find in so many things that it will be a totally different world. Mm. So what you can't do is use the old plan for your future. So mm. when you see the world is changing, you need to change your plans to make sure you get to where you want to get to. Back to you, Mr. Phil. Well, let's round this up here. We've got to go straight into part three. Ladies and gentlemen, it is happening. This process works. This is part two of this process works. And, you know, it's going to work for you as well. Okay. Wherever you are in Africa, like Mr. Kline said, we are in the entrepreneurial age. And these are what makes it happen. Okay. See you next time. God bless. Say bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.